people would know it's Father's Day, of course, today. Father's Day. And uh, we think of our fathers, some that have, might have passed away or fathers that are present or your own father. Everyone's got a father. So just some questions just to lead off, if I can. And you can help me here. Thank you. You can help me here with what makes a good father? What, what, what would you say? Help me here with any things that you can think of. Uh, what is a good father? What is a good model father? Tell me about your father. Who, what the, the things that you appreciate about your father? Guidance. Guidance, yeah. Uh, I missed that one, sorry. Provider, yeah. Provision, yeah. Love. Now, Arthur said that? Family values. Teachers, yeah. Values. Oh, can't write very good. <laughs> Caring, yeah. Yeah. Being there, yeah. Present. Yeah, yeah, looks after you, yeah. Yeah, what else? Long-suffering, yeah. <laughs> I know my dad's long-suffering with me. I'm, lo I'm long-suffering with him. <laughs> <laughs> Protective, yeah, protection, yeah. There's lots of things, isn't there? We could... Helpful. What's that? Powerful? Helpful. Helpful. Yeah, who do you go to when you need something done? Need some wisdom, hopefully. I'm sure we could add so many more things to that little list there. Yeah. yeah. Understanding. Understanding, yeah. Tolerance. All right, I think we'll, um, we'll, we'll hold it there because I've run out of space here. Many, many more. Plus, plus, plus. Yeah, so we can think of fathers and we think, what makes a good father? Who is the best father? Who could? <laughs> we'll get to that. So, you know, the, think of the, what is the, the best father we can know and what, he, what it means for us to have a good father. And, of course, we know fathers can be human. Of course, they are human and fathers can not always live up to the best or being the best father. But I'd like to tell you this Father's Day of the very best father, the very best father who we can know and what he means for us. Many suffer in this nation. As we know, there's a lot of fatherlessness, isn't there? There's a generation of fatherlessness. There's a sense where there's a certain loss where dad is missing at times from the family. At times, earthly fathers can fail us or they can walk away for whatever reason Families can know a great heartache and loss, and we know that's a reality for many. Of course, fathers pass away, as we know. I know uh, my dad, his father passed away. I think he was, wasn't even a teenager, so I never saw that grandfather on that side of my family. So, uh, you know, sometimes we can have a, a father that we only have for a few short years, and then they're gone. Uh, being a father is an important role, as we can see, many reasons why. A father is an important role, and these are big shoes we can, uh, can be hard to fill. And as a dad myself, I know that I have not always delivered my best for our children. We can look back and wonder how we could have done things better, have wisdom in hindsight, uh, how we could have, how can we do better in the present, and how can we do better for the future as a father. We can all think of that, and now as a, as a grandfather also. And being a father is a great privilege, and, but it's a responsibility too, isn't it? And as the saying goes, like father, like son. Sometimes we can follow our father in our father's footsteps and it may not always be the right way too. We know only too well that, as I say, at times fathers can fail. Earthly fathers can fail us. Um, they can set a not-so-good example. The Bible tells of such fathers. For example, we see, if you'd like to turn to 2 Chronicles 29, verse 6. 2 Chronicles 29, verse 6. And I've got the words here we can see also uh, to, to watch uh, on the overhead. 2 Chronicles 29. A father who is a not so good example. 2 Chronicles 29, verse 6. 
And Hezekiah is saying, for our fathers have trespassed, they've sinned. They've done that which was evil in the sight of, of the Lord our God and have forsaken him and have turned away their faces from the habitation of the Lord and turned their backs. They turn their backs on God. They turn their backs on worship. Fathers that have trespassed, they've sinned, they've done evil in the eyes of our Lord our God. So said King Hezekiah of the fathers of the time that they had of that time and situation on behalf of the nation of Israel, these fathers had failed their generation. Hezekiah himself had such a father named Ahaz. Ahaz, a king who had led the nation away from God and turned from him, turned his back. A nation misled by Ahaz, the king of that time, led away from God and truth into darkness. And Hezekiah then began to reign. And as a king, he was 25 years old when he took the rulership. And of Hezekiah, it says that he did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. He didn't follow in his father's footsteps. He did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord according to all that David, his father, had done. Um, which is, um, not sure that I've got that scripture there. No, that's okay. I didn't write that one down. But um, Hezekiah did that which was right in the eyes of this Lord and according to all that his forefather David had done, which is 2 Chronicles 29 verses 1 and 2. So Hezekiah determined not to follow his earthly father, but rather not his immediate father, father who was a bad example but Hezekiah decided to follow his spiritual forefather and his kingly ancestor David. Hezekiah decided he would not follow his immediate earthly father Ahaz but his forefather David. Now no David was a godly man and he had a heart after God while David himself was not always a perfect role model. Of course, we know David also had his failings. But the point is that as fathers, we have a vital role because children look up to us, don't they? Well, that's what they're supposed to do. <laughs> but they, they, uh, fathers uh, have got a vital role and, and children tend to follow their fathers. So hopefully, we that are fathers, we adopt... we, we display good qualities and character and choose not to follow our faulty ones. Hopefully our children will adopt our good qualities. And when Hezekiah could not imitate his dad, he found, he found a faithful man of God worthy of imitation. So likewise for us too. King Hezekiah did not follow the poor example of his father. He called upon his nation that as a people they were determined to turn back to follow the Lord. We see that here in this next verse here, 2 Chronicles 30 verse 8. And Hezekiah says, Now be ye not stiff-necked. You know, it kind of, it's a bit painful having a stiff neck, isn't it? <laughs> you know, that sort of stubbornness, that not yielding. Don't be stiff-necked as your fathers were, but rather yield yourselves unto the Lord and enter into his sanctuary which he hath sanctified, forever and serve the Lord your God that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you today we often have what you could say are absent fathers sometimes or there are fathers that can sometimes fail but thankfully there are fathers we would do well to look up to and follow some of these things we talked about here the good things that fathers ought to and do display and for all their frailties they show care and love to their children and they are a good godly example. They live up to their responsibilities and they provide for their families. And God helping us, let us as fathers here today aspire to be such men, such men, men of character and quality. And that we, all of us, can reflect on our own fathers and what we can learn from them. The good things we can learn, where they've, they've lived in a godly example and they've done righteously, they've done the good thing and we can learn how to better ourselves. So I want to show you today, together, how we can 
know that there is an ultimate role model for a father. Of course, we know who that is. I tell you today of the very best father. And he is the one the Bible calls him father. He is the one who promises to be a father to the fatherless. You know, the son that uh, are orphaned or they're taken from their natural parents and our Lord God is called a father to the fatherless and a judge of the widows. God in his holy habitation, Psalm 68, verse 5. Now just think how the Lord Jesus referred to the Lord God. The Lord Jesus referred to God as my father 53 times in the Gospels, 53, my father. When Jesus talked about the Father, he did not just call him my Father, he also called him our Father. Our Father. Some 21 times in the Gospels. My Father, 53 times. Our Father, 21 times in the Gospels. Now you who believe in the Lord Jesus are privileged to know that his, this greatest and highest relationship with God, our Father. That's kind of mind-blowing, isn't it? That We can call the God, the creator of the world and the universe, our Father, our Father. Don't you think? It's wonderful, isn't it? And what's more, the Lord Jesus calls God your Father, your Father 21 times in the Gospels as well. 21 times your Father. It's a bit slow this morning, this... Oh, here we go. Your Father. Our th- and how wonderful that you can enter into this personally, that you can, that he is your Father, your Father. Amen? 21 times in the Gospels. So how wonderful you can enter into this wonderful relationship with the Lord God. That privilege, that precious privilege that you can have that close relationship with God. And it tells, um, as our Lord prayed in that familiar prayer that people can uh, often repeat, our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, which art in heaven. It tells of that personal relationship with the highest and best Father, God himself. Amen? That, That precious relationship, there's nothing that beats that, nothing that compares with that. Our Father, which art in heaven. And when you look at this, there's kind of a double relationship too. There is sonship, our Father, and there is brotherhood. Because it's saying our Father. We're brothers and sisters together. When I say sonship, I'm meaning sons and daughters and and that sense of brotherhood. We're brothers and sisters. That we're a family of God, aren't we? Unto our Father. And he has bestowed his love upon us. It tells us in 1 John 3 verse 1, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God, the children of God. We should be called that. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. What manner of love. It's just astonishing love, isn't it? Wonderful love, incomparable love, unconditional love, undeserved love, that he would bestow it upon us. The great love of God. What love, what joy. Behold, it's just astonishing that we can be called members of the family of God, brothers and sisters together, children of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And this privilege that we know, it's, it's an adoption. It's, it's by God's granting it to us. And he wants you in his family. If you're not in his family, he wants you in his family today. He wants you to be part of his family. And the Bible tells how God adopts his children. You know, we know that's, that's a wonderful, beautiful thing too, isn't it? To be adopted is just precious, isn't it? Because you're actually chosen. When, when the parents already know you. And that's what God does for, you, for us, isn't it? It's just even more precious that we are adopted. That as a son, as a daughter, he's brought us right into his family, brought us under his roof and into his home, into that, that loving relationship such that we are counted children of God with all the rights and the privileges. And it's a permanent relationship too. Paul tells us how... God adopts us to be his very own children. Uh, We were once held as captives to the spirit of the world, now set free by God's liberating 
setting free, soul-saving power. And his Holy Spirit fills our hearts with joy and blessing. Just to know we belong, we're part of the family. Behold what manner of love. And Romans 8, 14, it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. Romans 8, 14, it tells about the spirit of sonship. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, the children of God. And it says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit of adoption. We're adopted into the family of God. And it says we cry, Abba, Father. It's got that sense of, uh, it's a very um, tender word, Abba. A very tender, like daddy or dad or a pa papa or such. Abba is a very close and intimate term. And we're adopted into the family of God such that we have that closeness of relationship that we can call him Abba, Father. We can cry tenderly out to him that he is our Father. Sorry, the, the, uh, it's not showing the right things up there at the moment, but... That's Romans 8, verse 15. Romans 8, verse 15. That's the one there. And then the well, next one we see, um, we cry, Abba, Father. Think of God the Father and what he is for us. He's the very best Father. And just now, you see these things that we've talked about here when people gave us some examples. A lot of these I've already got on the, uh, the next um, slide here. Some of the things about the very best father, God is our father, God is our role model, if you like, the, the role model of the perfect father. And the first one I put to you is that he listens. The, the father, God the father listens. We know the word tells us that his throne is open 24 by 7. And we can come boldly into his very presence, into the very throne room, of our great king and father. It says, Proverbs 15, 29, it says, The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. God hears the prayer that we pray. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. Friends, today, God the Father is close by. I like to say that he's close as a prayer away. Amen? He's as close as a prayer away. And we have constant access to him. And we, he is never too busy to hear from us. You know, we know as earthly fathers, I know speaking from um, personal experience, sometimes you get very busy and the, you don't spend as much time with the children as really would be the best thing, let's face it. Of course, we still got responsibilities as the breadwinner, as the one who's got to make the living. But we all need to make sure that we give time, don't we? And the good blessed thing about our Father God is that he listens. He hears our prayer. And we can come to him at any time. We've got access to him. He listens. Uh, next one is that he chastens. Now that's not so nice, <laughs> is it? Sometimes the Father chastens. And uh, we see that, for example, in Revelation 3, verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. To chasten, it means discipline. You know, there's need for discipline. And it can be hard. It's probably the, one of the, I'd say it's the hardest thing, don't you? Uh, fathers here today. That, or, you know, whether you're on the receiving end or the giving end of discipline, it's a tough thing, isn't it? But it's needful, needful discipline and correction. It, when we're going the wrong way, we need correction. It's like these days, everyone's too scared to offend, you know. The teachers aren't allowed to put a big cross next to things. They're, they've kind of got to be more gentle and, uh, you know, it's like uh, all these, you know, sports in the schools these days. There can't be winners and losers because you might hurt someone's uh, self-esteem or something. But now there is a sense where there is discipline. There is needful discipline and it's part of God's love that he does chasten us. He, he corrects us, he points us, he redirects us, and he administers this tenderly and for our good. He chastens us. Another fact about 
our great Father God is that he nurtures us. He nurtures us. And it says that, for example, in Ephesians 6, 4, you beat me to it. <laughs> Ephesians 6, verse 4, it says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Our Lord always nurtures us. He knows when we, we need that TLC, that extra space and time. He builds us up. He, he looks after us. He cares for us. He nurtures us. He nurtures us such that he wants us to grow, to mature, to be stronger. He's guiding us and lifting us and helping us find the right way to make those wise life choices. The good godly father nurtures us. And we can all think of such situations. Wow, yeah, I can look back and think, yeah, I was nurtured. You know, think these days of even when they're little toddlers and, and they're just inclined to run here and willy-nilly and run across the road, you know, you've got to have that watchful eye as parents to, to know that uh, they have got no road sense. And you can think, it only takes a few seconds of inattention. And the, the father, the, the mother, they nurture the children to make sure that they're looked after carefully. Another one is he teaches us, the father, the good father, our perfect, great, very best father teaches us. It says in John 14, 26, But the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring things, all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. Our Lord says, learn of me, doesn't he? He says, learn of me. He is our teacher. He's our subject. He's our school, the school of Christ. May we learn Christ. Learn Christ. It's the ultimate learning, isn't it? We can learn a trade, a profession, uh, some get letters after our name, get some credentials or some um, qualification. But what matters most is that we learn Christ. We learn Christ. Amen. Now may we always be attending to his word. He teaches us. Another one is that he provides. A lot of these we did talk about when you fired some at me there. Genesis 22 verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. The occasion here was Abraham and Isaac going up the mountain and uh, God testing Abraham for his faithfulness, for his obedience. And Isaac asked, where's the, we see the wood, but where's the lamb? And Abraham said, God will provide. And God did provide, amen? As God provided at Calvary's cross for us, the perfect provision, our Father provides, amen? The great Father that will always make provision for us. And really we owe our all to him. As the next verse says, James 1 verse 17, it says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness nor shadow of turning. Really, every good gift comes from his hand, doesn't it? The breath, the breath we breathe, the, the sun we see, the, the green grass, everything that we have to enjoy, just the things we take for granted, Every good gift comes down from the Father of lights. Do we stop and think that? What God has provided. Another one is he guides. The best Father provides. Um, oh, I think I just did that one. <laughs> that was the one I just did. Sorry about that. Genesis 22, 8. And then the next one is... Um, uh, that he guides. Yeah. Oh, there we go. He guides. Sorry, I'm getting mixed up. He guides. Psalm 48, verse 14. If you got that one there, Psalm 48, 14, it says, For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide, even unto death. God will guide. He will guide us. Don't we need guiding? Climbing this mountain of life, he goes before us. The Bible says, Walk in his steps. Follow in his steps. He's our guide. There's no greater God. He knows the way to go and he shows us the way to go. 
And the next one, Proverbs 3, verse 6, it says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. We need someone to show us the way, to show us the way to tread. We need direction for life. Who better to lead us than the very maker of life itself, our creator and sustainer of life? He guides. And just the next one there is that he cares. He cares. The very best father cares for us. In Mark 4.38, a situation is a storm on the lake, the disciples there with Christ leaning on the pillow, and the disciples really getting very anxious as the storm was lashing the ship, the waves, the storm, the wind. And it says, Mark 4.38, And he, the Lord, was in the hinder part of the ship, the back part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Now what a question to say, Jesus, don't you care? We're going to die here. It's, Jesus, don't you care? Of course he cares. You know, the song goes, of course he cares. Of course he cares for us. Does Jesus care? Of course he does. There can be times though when we wonder, where is God? When situations are troubled and we wonder if God is here for us as the disciples there in the stormy sea. But the Lord Jesus is always with you. He's always with you. What will our response be? Let's just consider, just as we just recap just thus far. We've looked at the best father and what the best father does. There's many more, no doubt, we could say. But think about now, think about, we'll just hold the uh, slides there for a time. Think about our response. We've got that if Father listens to us, he hears the prayer. What will our response be? If he listens to us, what should we be doing? Talking to him. Talk to your Father. Pray. Yeah. Do we do that? If the very best Father listens for our prayer, shouldn't we pray? Amen. We should pray. Talk to him. He chastens us. He chastens us. What should our response be? <laughs> yeah, repent. I trust him. Really trust his hand. When God chastens you, when he corrects you, when he says you're doing something wrong, stop doing it. Obey him. Trust him. Trust and obey, I suppose, isn't it? You could say. You are the sons of God. You are the sons and daughters of God, the children of God. He's the very best father. Sometimes he will chasten you. It's not always easy. We get out of sync with where God wants us to be. When we get off track, he will redirect us he will chasten us he will discipline us so trust him obey him the next one was he nurtures us what should our response be to god's nurture receive it be receptive be receptive to god's nurture you know sometimes we can um we can shy away we can we can um, reject God's nurture when he's trying to tell us something and show us something and help us to grow. We can obstruct God, our Father. But we should be receptive. When he puts something on our heart, when he convicts us, when he draws us to make a, a change, a direction, let's be receptive when he's nurturing us. See that for what it is. Another one was he teaches us what should our response be? When someone's teaching you, what should you do? Learn. Learn, Learn from God. <laughs> Heard about the best father. Let's be the best son, the best daughter. Amen. Let's learn. Let's learn about Jesus more and more. 
How can we learn, study, fellowship, have time with the word, receive God's truth, take it in through every channel you can get hold of it. You know, this, I know for some of you, and as I have done, you spend hours driving to work and driving home or on the train or tram or bus. You know, get some good gospel preaching, get the Bible on, on audio and listen to the word, feed your spirit. And starve your doubts to death. Feed your faith and starve your doubts to death. Learn as he teaches. Our response is to learn his teaching. We see his provision. What should our response be for God's provision? Be grateful, be thankful, thank him. You know, gratefulness. How can we be more thankful? How can we be more grateful for what God has given to us? Do we stop and thank him? I think we lack that, don't we? I know I do. I know I need to thank him more. I need to be more conscious of God's many gifts and gracious acts to me. How can I be a more thankful son? And then we see he guides us. When someone's guiding you, what should you do? Follow them. Follow Jesus. You know what was the common thing that he would say to those that he called follow me follow me do we follow our father our heavenly father do we follow jesus and that following jesus might be following him to the death as it were in some countries taking up your cross literally and going to your crucifixion literally such and and so friends we can learn our response should be when he guides us to follow what he's telling you and then we see his care for us. He cares for us. And uh, what should our response be to God's care? To trust him. He knows what he's doing. Trust God. He's got your best interests at heart. He cares for you. And uh, when you're in that stormy sea, when uh, the waves are tossing and the wind is blowing and everything's pretty uh, shaky and and up, upheaval is your lot in life. He says, peace be still. Peace be still. He speaks peace to our soul. And we can have the very best father today, God. Amen. You can have the very best father, yet we know we can fail him as a son, as a daughter. We have to play our part, which uh, we'll go to the next one, Psalm 142, verse 4. Um, again, talking about God's care, uh, the psalmist in Psalm 142, he says, I looked on my right hand and behold, there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. Verse 5, I cried unto the Lord, unto thee, O Lord. I said, thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Now, there can be times when earthly supports will fail. We look on the right hand, we look here and there, there's no one to help us, but he is always your refuge. Fellow believer this morning, he is your refuge. He is your refuge. And our Heavenly Father, he's always by our side. It, if it seems like he is not, then we need to ask, why is this so? As I've heard it put, you know, if you feel like God's not close to you, then who moved? You know, it's a good question, isn't it? When, when we think, well, actually, maybe that's the problem. <laughs> At times people can wander like the prodigal wandered, didn't he? He wandered away. Uh, Luke 15, the story goes where he squandered, uh, he's wasted his wealth, it was riotous living. It was um, just a waste of a life, really. And he wasted his inheritance that he received. And he wandered far, far away into a far country. But the good thing is the prodigal returned to the father's house. And you might feel like you're a bit of a prodigal, maybe at times. You can return to the father's house. And what does he do? He just wraps his arms around you and gives you a, a squeeze and a hug and a kiss on the neck. And he says, welcome home, son. And that's what our father does for us, isn't he? When we may fail and we falter as a son, as a daughter of this great father, this very best father. 
He, he loves you today and he cares for you. He knows what you have need of. So how can we know this very best father that I'm talking of? Of course, some would say, oh, we're all children of God. But we know the Bible doesn't say that. We have to be born again into his family. And we see that here in John 1, verse 12. And verse 11, it says, He came unto his own, his own received him not. But verse 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Wow, that you could receive sonship, that you could be declared his son, you could be declared his daughter. Today, if you've never received it, you can receive him and you can receive that privilege of being called children of God. And friends, today there's nothing greater, that no greater word that we can share. Um, if you know that not yet, you can know it now, here and now, today. Now sometimes we go witnessing and we get various reactions and responses and Often it's not interested and it's kind of sad really, isn't it? And I know um, just yesterday we were witnessing and there's a woman, we, she must have slammed the door on us and then we're in the uh, passing a reserve and she came across our path again and we didn't recognise her so we started to witness to her again and she was saying, oh, don't you get it? You know, uh, just, you know, I've got my religion kind of thing and Oh, you know, that kind of response. Um, oh, you shouldn't be pushing this on people or whatever it is. Now, that kind of attitude. Oh, you know, I'm all right, Jack. You know, she'll be right, mate. Uh, I, I'm, I don't, I've got, got it sorted. But it's our message. We must declare this. We must declare this because for us to neglect to declare it is to really, it's to, it's to fail our God, really, isn't it? Because he wants us to. He calls us to this. And, and there's no greater word, no greater testimony, no greater message you can impart to another human soul than this message. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. There's no greater story you can tell. There's no greater communication you can make than to tell this to a soul, a human soul even if they reject you, even if they hate you for it. Because thankfully there are some who do receive it. And as you have done, one day you received it by faith. And just lastly, Galatians 3.26, it says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. That's what makes the difference. It turns on this, on faith. Faith, trust him. Trust Jesus died for your sins. Trust Jesus died in your place paying your penalty, receive it on your part. Trust him, believe him as your Lord and Saviour. You can know the Father's love. You can become the children of God. And that's the wonderful truth that we, it, it all boils down to this and it's almost like you can't, it, it bears repeating constantly because this is the vital message our world needs to hear, that you can become a child of God by faith in Jesus Christ and I leave you with this today that you can be made declared to be a child of the king to know the very best father God the heavenly father you can become brothers and sisters together and children of his what a privilege to know he's, he's always listening at times he's chastening he's nurturing he's teaching he's providing he's guiding he's caring he's always there for you and we that are fathers can learn from his example as the ultimate example for each one of us. And, and of all of us, for our own father, we can see those truths in, in him, I hope. Maybe some less so or more so, but let's learn to be children. Let's, let's trust him so we can be children of the living God. And it's not by any working of our own or manufacturing of our own effort or any doing of our own it's by faith in christ jesus it's simply that trust him trust him now by faith and if you'd like uh, if you've heard this today and you think wow that that's something i want i haven't received it yet i want that if you're a woman today i'll refer you to a, a, a godly christian woman to talk to 
or, or a man, you can talk to me or I'll refer you to another Christian man to pray with you, to counsel you, to encourage you in trusting Jesus today, that you can become a child of the living God by faith today. It's simply trusting him and calling upon his saving name to save your soul today. Let's go to our last song to close now and be encouraged with further fellowship time. Please linger for a bit of um, a chat and a cuppa and maybe a word of prayer or comfort or encouragement. En encourage one another, exhort one another, comfort one another. We're going to close with this one. We have heard the joyful sound. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Spread the tidings all around. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Bear the news to every land. Climb the mountains, cross the waves. Onward tears, our Lord's command. Jesus saves. Wafted on the rolling tide, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Tell to sinners far and wide, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing you islands of the sea, echo back you ocean caves. Sing in triumph for the tomb, Jesus saves. Sing above the battle strife, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, by his death and endless life, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, shout it brightly through the gloom, when the heart for mercy craves, sing and try. saves. Give the winds a mighty voice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Nations now rejoice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Shout salvation full and free. Highest hills and deepest caves. This a song of victory. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this time together. We thank you, Lord, for our, heaven, our earthly fathers. And Lord, we thank you for you as our heavenly father. Lord, may we be children of God that know you and trust you, follow you, learn of you and, and obey you, Lord. And Lord, guide our steps, Lord, that you would be glorified in our lives, that we would be uh, obedient children, Lord, unto you, and know and do your will. Help us to live the life you've called us to, and bless each family, each heart, each home on this day, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you today.